Today I want to show you how to make a blending stump, but not these ones. These ones are too difficult to make. I've got a much better way of making it. It's quicker, easier, and they're adjustable. Let me show you how I do it. The main reason why I don't like these guys is they're handy and they work well, but when they get dirty, then you have to go and sand them down. It's such a pain to keep them clean. And they always only come to that one point over there, so they're not particularly versatile. So let me show you how I make mine. All you need is a sheet of photocopy paper, some magic tape, and a pair of scissors. You take your magic tape, fold over the end, like that just to form a little tab I can cut off a piece and I usually just stick him onto the roll of tape and I put him on side now you take your photocopy paper and fold him in half like that take your nail run it along that fold that really embeds that fold and makes it easy for us to tear this sheet of paper in half because we're going to make two blending stumps out of that sheet of paper hold it so that the long end is facing you put your finger in the center grab the corner this one if you're right-handed that one if you're left-handed roll it over to form a cone like an ice cream cone like that and now all you do is just roll this guy up so you've got that so now can you see the tip isn't sharp and that's fine sometimes you want a blunt tip like that for doing broad shadings if you want a sharper tip then hold it upright like that and I see inside there you've got this little the end of the paper put your fingers in there and grab it between your two fingers like that now hold on to this end over here like that and now by pulling your hand in and out you can get a sharper or a blunter tip so you can make it as sharp or as blunt as you want it once you've got the tip you want take this end over here and stick him down using your tape just like that so now you can do your blendings like this and if you want to that's why you put the little tab on over there you can loosen him up again grab that little inside bit of paper over there create yourself a new tip maybe this time you want a bit more of a, a blunt one stick him down again do the blending you want if you want to sharpen him up again you know what to do sharpen him up and stick him down so the problem with blending stumps is when they get dirty so i'm just going to take a sheet of paper here that's got lots of graphite on it and i'm going to just dirty that tip up really using well so now you've got this dirty tip like that so all you do is just loosen it up grab that little inside bit and then form yourself a new tip as sharp or as blunt as you want it, it doesn't matter. That, as you've opened it and closed it like that, has automatically moved that little edge of paper that you've used to blend previously. It's over here somewhere else. So now you can take this guy, and you can blend him. When he gets dirty, loosen him up. Form yourself a new new point, and that dirty 
that dirty paper is now gone. It's, it's, it's somewhere else. You can carry on like that until you can't find a clean piece of paper anymore. Then all you do is you open him up. Take off your magic tape. So there's the there's that dirty edge that you've got. So just take a let's put him like that, so he's in the picture. Just take a ruler and a craft knife. And just cut off that end. Roll him up again. Form your tip and stick him down. So you can now use this guy for ages and ages and ages. What I also like about this is look how broad it is. It's so much easier to hold and more natural to hold than, for example, that. I find it difficult holding these guys. But this guy over here, I'll never have, if I've got a short, broad tip. Or a sharp tip, it doesn't matter, it's always nice and easy to hold. Alright, so let me show you a few tricks about using your blending stump. The first is, because I've used only half the paper, I create two, one with a sharp point and one with a blunter point. And we're going to use them in different situations. The most important is to know when to use your blending stump. When I first started drawing, and you needed to do a shading. Then I'd put on a bunch of graphite like this. And then I'd try and rely on my blending stump to get this shading over here. And get everything all nice and smooth. And it does work. To a point. But it's never as good as it can be. For a start, you see you never really get rid of that transition. You can always see where the smudging started and the laying down the graphite ended. Then you sit with another problem is you've now taken that graphite the loose graphite that's there, and you've now smashed it into the weave of the paper. So you'll find it's very difficult to erase any of that now. The eraser tends to smudge and slip over that because you filled up the weave of the paper. So the correct way of blending is always first rely on your pencils. So to get a smooth shading, you will start with say a 2H. Then you'll use overlapping strokes to lay that down as smooth as possible. So by using the overlapping strokes, it's already eliminated half of the smudging that you need to do. Then to go darker, you use another next softer pencil. So they have gone from a 2H to an H. And I'm using exactly the same pressure, which is really light. So just the softness of the pencil is instantly giving me a shading already. Then I'll go to the next softer pencil, which is an HB. And the same pressure. I'm not adding any more pressure on the pencil. I'm letting the softness of the pencil do the work for me. So to get it darker, all you do is just add more layers of pencil. Okay, so can you see now how I'm getting a nice gradual shading and if you need it darker then all you do is just continue adding more graphite because that's then adding one layer of graphite over the next and that's making it appear darker and only then after that do you start pressing harder 
on your pencil to get it even darker. See that? So they are pressed hard. Now is when your blending stump comes in handy. So now you take, I like to take a broad one when I'm doing shadings like this. And I'm going to use circular motions. And I'm going to use the blending stump to just get that final smoothing of the tonal values. Just by gradually moving across like this. And that helps to just get rid of those last little pencil strokes that you've put down. Like that. So always rely on your pencils first and then just use the blending stump to get that beautiful smooth texture. Examples of when you would do that is like here. In that jersey over there, you've now done the blending, and now you could just take your blending stump and just get that last little bit of smoothing into that, just to really make that look nice and continuous. Other times you would use it. would be in situations like this, when you've got that nice continuous shading. So you've done your best with the pencil. So you've now got it as smooth as you can with the pencil. Now you can come back in with your blending stump and just get that final softening of your shading. And you can see it goes really quickly when you do this. The next situation is when you're doing portraits. So you're going to get your skin tone as smooth as what you can and then you'll come back in and just add that final little smoothness in there as well. Especially in areas like here in the corner of the eye. where you need that very subtle little shading. That's when your blending stump comes in great. You lay down that little bit of graphite and then you blend it out. Other times I like using it is when you want to lift out a highlight, a very subtle highlight. So then you can actually go and steal some graphite, for example, in an area like that. And you could lay it down. And as you can see, it's a super light little subtle amount that you've got there. Then you just take your needle eraser, give them a 
sharp point like that. And now you can lift out that that bright highlight that you've got over there. I also use my blending stump in places like the lips. You've got these kinds of cracks over here, but you also want to get some of those horizontal ones as well. So you steal a little bit of graphite from another place on the drawing, and then you can gently bring it in. Let's bring one over there. Can you see how subtle that detail is? Let's bring in another one, say, over there. So you get those really subtle little details in there that you can't really get with a pencil. It's just not that easy with a pencil. Then sometimes you'll find yourself in a situation like this. Can you see over here, you've got a bit of a halo around the flower. So your background needs to go right up against it. And that's when you'll use your blending stump. All right, so can you see that tip is really dirty now? So I'm just going to loosen it, pull it, and re-establish it. And there you go. I've got a nice clean tip again. Okay, so I'll use a broad tip for a shading like that. And I'll take this graphite that's over here. I'll first start over there, and then I'll move that graphite up. right up against there because if you use your pencil you're going to make this area darker by just blending what you've got you maintain the same tonal value by picking up some of this and putting it down over there You see how nice and even that is already over there. So you just continue all the way down there until that halo of yours is gone. And you can also use your blending stump to get fine detail. For example, if you want to get some just very low contrast hairs in an area like that, then you'd actually just take a scrap piece of paper, scratch some graphite over it like that, and now you take your blending stump with a nice sharp point, one like that, and you drop over there to pick up some of that graphite. And now you can draw in those little subtle hairs. So you pick it up, draw it in, pick it up, draw it in, pick it up, draw it in. Like that. Right, so that's giving you a good idea of how to make yourself a blending stump and where to use it correctly. So if you like the drawings that I was working on today, they're all available as step-by-step -step draw along tutorials on my website, onlineartlessons.com. There's a link in the description below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.